Hello and welcome to Sonder. My name is Maggie and I am a knitter, spinner, fiber artist, mother, and doctor who lives here in Denver, Colorado. I hope everyone is doing really, really well. It is November, let's see, Thursday, November 9th, and I am coming to you at a different location in my home, and that is my kitchen. I feel so awkward y'all and I have tried to film this so many times that I am just gonna go I'm just gonna do it um, I've never filmed a like how to video before and so I'm just gonna be very real and show you how I make these lotion bars so I on my last knitting podcast shared some lotion bars that I made that I absolutely adore these are lotion bars that have the intention of being used for fiber artists. And that is mainly because I did put lanolin in them. These are really, really amazing um, bars of lotion that you can throw into your knitting bag, into your backpack, into your purse, and have a really beautiful organic, um, all natural product with you wherever you go. So I wanted to make this video partially because I really, really love these. I've sent them to a bunch of friends because I'm just like obsessed. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I want everyone to have these. They're so good. Um, but I realized that like, I can't send these to everybody. And so I wanted to give people the recipe that I use to make these so that you can make them at home if that's something you want to do. Um, I think also going into the holiday season that these are really, really great gifts to give to crafters or <clears throat> non-crafty people as well. It is really, really nice to just have the ability to take care of your hands even if you don't craft. So that is what we're going to do today. We are going to learn how to make these beautiful lotion bars. I am just going to start off by talking about the products that you will need. And many, many of these are things that you have already in your kitchen. So <clears throat> let's go through it. The first thing you are going to need is a mason jar or some other, um, vessel that is okay to be heated up a little bit and then I use two different pots one smaller pot and one larger pot these are going to be used to be making a double boiler because you you really with these oils and butters you don't want to burn them and you don't want to heat them up very quickly and so you use a double boiler to really disperse the heat and make it very gentle the next thing you need is some sort of vessel in order to, I feel like things stuck to it, is some sort of vessel <clears throat> in order to actually melt all the butters and waxes and oils together. I just use, as you can see, the same vessel for anything that I'm using beeswax with. So that <clears throat> for me is usually different types of lotions, um, chapstick, and then also making beeswax candles. I just use the same vessel, and this is something that I picked up at my local thrift store. It is just a metal pitcher. And the reason I do that is that beeswax is nearly impossible to get off of things. And so once you have used beeswax, it will be very difficult to get out. And so I just dedicate this vessel to any craft that I am doing with beeswax. And if there's a little bit of beeswax in there left over for the next time I use it, that is totally fine. <laughs> beeswax doesn't really go bad. Um, and so one vessel and then a kitchen scale, which ours is kind of dyed with coffee because we use this to measure our coffee every morning. And lastly, some sort of thing mold to put the bars into. I really like using these silicone molds that I got off of Amazon. That being said, I think a really good alternative that most people will have in their um, pantry 
is a muffin tin with little muffin tin liners. That will work just as well as this. And you won't have to buy anything. So those are all of the like equipment that you need to make these lotion bars. And then I'll just go over the oils and butters that I use to make them. So the first is beeswax. You can get beeswax anywhere. I wish that I had like a local farmer that sent it to me. My mom does have, my mom and dad do have um, bees at their house but they've never like harvested the wax and part of me like wants them to because how decadent would that be? But anyway, um, <laughs> beeswax is one thing that you will need. And that is the thing that really keeps these bars hard and helps them hold their shape. The next thing that I put in there is um, this deodorized cocoa butter wafers. And these are from brambleberry.com. Brambleberry is a really, really amazing resource to go to for any of your like body product needs. Um, they have tons of oils and essential oils and butters and things like that. So if you're like making any lotions or soaps or anything like that, I highly recommend checking them out. But this is the deodorized cocoa butter wafers. I really like the deodorized ones because I do like the smell of cocoa butter. It's like very chocolatey. But I don't always want the smell of that. And so this has like a very faint smell of that, but it kind of takes away a little bit of that very cocoa butter smell. So I put in the deodorized cocoa butter wafers, shea butter, um, which this is just a block of shea butter, which I also got from brambleberry.com. So shea butter and then lanolin so these three butters are the sort of like solid at room temperature butters that i use um, but this is lanolin i feel like as crafters as fiber artists having a little bit of the sheep with us all the time is amazing and lanolin just feels awesome and then finally from a like butters and oils perspective i am just going to be using olive oil so this is just organic olive oil that i got from the grocery store and then i am going to be doing an optional step um, and a step that's slightly different than the step i did with these um bars with these bars i actually infused the oil and for these i actually used jojoba oil and olive oil and I infused that oil at room temperature for like two or three months. And that is really beautiful, but takes forever. And I wanted to show you how to do this without having to do that step that takes months and months. And so I'm actually gonna be heating very slowly, heating up the olive oil to infuse it with a few different herbs and flowers. So. The first is chamomile. I really love chamomile. These were made with chamomile as well. I think it's just a really soothing, comforting smell. And so I wanted to throw that in. This is just a giant bag of Rishi chamomile tea. So tons of dried chamomile flowers. We really like chamomile in this house. And then I also have calendula and lavender. Again, this process is totally optional and not something you need to do, um, but I just think it adds something really special to the lotion bars. So with that, let's get cracking on our little recipe.
So the first thing I'm going to be doing is infusing the olive oil. And so you would have already seen me measure out the olive oil. And then I add the flowers to it just based off of like what I think and how I feel. I don't think that there's a right or wrong way to do that. I think that the more important thing is just what intention you are putting into your salves or your um, lotion bars. And so that is what I did. I added lavender, calendula, and chamomile, as I said to this, and mix the oil in. And now I just have the oil in a double boiler. I will keep this on the double boiler, just having the infused oils um, for about four hours. So this is something where I'll be working from home and knitting at home and I'll just continue to come in and check on the oil and have the beautiful infused oils really, really get in there. I wanted to go over the specific recipe that I used while also giving you some ratios that you can use so that you can make as big or small a batch as you want. For this recipe, you'll need about 40% oil. I used olive oil, but you can use any oil like jojoba oil, avocado oil, almond oil. Then to that, you'll need 30% wax, which I use the beeswax. 11% cocoa butter, 12% shea butter, and 7% lanolin. For me, this ended up being 231 grams of oil, 173 grams of wax, 68 grams of cocoa butter, 73 grams of shea butter, and 43 grams of lanolin. I'll have all this written down below as well. have all of my butters, <clears throat> oils, wax, and lanolin in this container. I'm just going to transfer it here and start melting it in my double boiler. While my waxes and butters and oils are melting together on the double boiler, I am going to be getting my molds together. I think that these look really, really nice. When you have just a little bit of dried flowers at the very bottom of the mold, and so that is what I'm gonna do. I think for the essential oil for these ones, I'm gonna probably use a little bit of lavender essential oil. And so I am going to line the base of all of my molds with a little bit of calendula because I think it looks so pretty and has such beautiful healing powers and with lavender as well.
If you are planning on adding some essential oils to your lotion bars, this is the perfect time to do so. I added about 40 drops to this recipe. Here you can see me filling up just a little bit of each of the molds. This makes it so that the dried flowers are really stuck only at the very top of the lotion bars and I just like the way it looks better. Once that's hardened, you can fill each lotion bar up to the very top, trying your best not to overfill it. Then just leave them on the counter to harden. They are ready to use right away once they're done. All right, y'all, I just got home. It's been about 24 hours since I last saw you. And I just wanted to show you how our beautiful lotion bars came out that we made together. So you can see that they are totally hardened here in the molds that we got. And literally all you need to do to get these out is to just apply a little bit of pressure from the bottom and then they just pop right out. I really, really love how these turned out. I think this was like one of the best recipes for lotion bars I have ever made. I just think I perfected it, y'all. So you can see that these lotion bars have this beautiful dried flower on one side. And I did wanted to point out that the way that I do that is when I, right after I put the dried flowers in, when I pour the lotion in, I pour a little layer of the lotion and then I let that harden fully. And the reason I do that is if you just go and you just pour right away without having that hardened layer, the dried flowers and things will float to the top of the bar. And so, let's see. I made a couple like that, so you can see here the difference. So this one, you did the way that I explained where you just let it fill a little bit and have that harden at the bottom. And then this is the alternative where many of the dried flowers have floated to the other side of the bar. Either way, they're going to work just as beautifully. It's just based off of what your preference is. So I usually, I just wanted to show these off because they're so beautiful, but I usually put these into a Tupperware. You can see these are my previous ones in here with it. So I put these into a Tupperware and I keep them in my fridge. They will store for like one or two years. It really depends on what you put into them, but they last for a really, really long time. And they don't need to be in the fridge. The only reason why I store them in there is that Denver can be very cold, but it can also be very hot. And because these melt kind of right close to room temperature, if you leave them just out on your counter space, then they can collect dust and they can also melt. <laughs> so I usually keep them in the fridge just for safekeeping and then I pop them out and put them into one of my sort of to-go tins. But these work really, really well. They smell amazing. They melt really easily on contact with the skin and they just feel divine. So I really, really enjoy this recipe of lotion bars, and I hope you will too. Um, like I said, I mainly use that ratio, but I will put my exact measurements of what I put into these bars down below in case you want to make the exact same ones yourself. All right, well, happy making, y'all. I hope that these wonderful lotion bars keep your busy, busy hands very well taken care of throughout the winter season. Bye.